Hayama, can you explain the different muscle groups in the upper limb? Certainly. The upper limb muscles are divided into several groups based on their location and function. Let's go through each of these groups. Let's start with the shoulder muscles. What can you tell me about them? The shoulder muscles, or musculi humeri, surround the shoulder joint and attach to the proximal end of the humerus. Key muscles here include the rotator cuff muscles, which are crucial for shoulder stability and movement. The rotator cuff consists of rotator cuff muscles, supraspinatus, origin, supraspinous fossa of the scapula, insertion, greater tubercle of the humerus, function, abduction of the arm at the shoulder joint, innervation, suprascapular nerve, C5, C6, infraspinatus, origin, infraspinous fossa of the scapula, insertion, greater tubercle of the humerus, function, external rotation of the arm, innervation, suprascapular nerve, C5, C6, teres minor, origin, lateral border of the scapula, insertion, greater tubercle of the humerus, function, external rotation of the arm, innervation, axillary nerve, C5, C6, subscapularis, origin, subscapular fossa of the scapula, insertion, lesser tubercle of the humerus, function, internal rotation of the arm, innervation, upper and lower subscapular nerves, C5, C6. What about the muscles of the arm? The muscles of the arm, or musculi brachii, can be divided into anterior and posterior groups. Anterior group, biceps brachii, origin, long head, supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula, short head, coracoid process of the scapula, insertion, radial tuberosity and bicipital aponeurosis, function, flexes the elbow and supinates the forearm, innervation, musculocutaneous nerve, C5, C6, brachialis, origin, anterior surface of the humerus, insertion, coronoid process and ulnar tuberosity, function, primary flexor of the elbow, innervation, musculocutaneous nerve, C5, C6, and radial nerve, C7, coracobrachialis, origin, coracoid process of the scapula, insertion, medial surface of the humerus, function, flexes and adducts the arm, innervation, musculocutaneous nerve, C5, C7, posterior group, triceps brachii, origin, long head, infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula, lateral head, posterior surface of the humerus, superior to the radial groove, medial head, posterior surface of the humerus, inferior to the radial groove, insertion, olecranon of the ulna, function, primary extensor of the elbow, innervation, radial nerve, C6, C8. Can you describe the muscles of the forearm? The forearm muscles, or musculi antibrachii, are categorized into anterior, lateral, and posterior groups. Anterior group, superficial layer, originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Flexor carpi radialis, flexes and abducts the wrist. Palmaris longus, tenses the palmar aponeurosis and flexes the wrist. Flexor carpi ulnaris, flexes and adducts the wrist. Pronator teres, pronates the forearm. Deep layer, includes muscles that flex the fingers. Flexor digitorum superficialis, flexes the middle phalanges of the fingers. Flexor digitorum profundus, flexes the distal phalanges of the fingers. Flexor pollicis longus, flexes the thumb. Pronator quadratus, pronates the forearm. Lateral group, brachioradialis. Origin, lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. Insertion, styloid process of the radius. Function, flexes the elbow. Innervation, radial nerve, C5, C6. Extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, extend and abduct the wrist. Posterior group, superficial layer, extends the wrist and fingers. Extensor digitorum, extends the fingers. Extensor digiti minimi, extends the little finger. Extensor carpi ulnaris, extends and adducts the wrist. Deep layer, 
supinator, supinates the forearm. Abductor pollicis longus, abducts the thumb. Extensor pollicis brevis and longus, extend the thumb. Extensor indices, extends the index finger. Innervation, radial nerve, C7, C8. What about the muscles of the hand? The hand muscles, or musculi manus, are responsible for fine motor movements. They are divided into thenar, hypothenar, and intermediate groups. Thenar muscles control the movements of the thumb. Abductor pollicis brevis abducts the thumb. Flexor pollicis brevis flexes the thumb. Opponens pollicis opposes the thumb. Adductor pollicis adducts the thumb. Innervation, median nerve, thenar muscles, and ulnar nerve, adductor pollicis. Hypothenar muscles control the movements of the little finger. Abductor digiti minimi abducts the little finger. Flexor digiti minimi brevis flexes the little finger. Opponens digiti minimi opposes the little finger. Innervation, ulnar nerve, C8, T1. Intermediate muscles include the lumbricals and interossei. Lumbricals, for muscles that flex the MCP joints and extend the IP joints. Origin, tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus. Insertion, extensor expansion of the fingers. Innervation, median nerve, lateral 2, and ulnar nerve, medial 2. Interossei, divided into dorsal, 4 muscles, and palmar, 3 muscles, groups. Dorsal interossei, abduct the fingers. Palmar interossei, adduct the fingers. Innervation, ulnar nerve, C8, T1. Lastly, could you explain the anatomy of the axillary region? The axillary region, or armpit, is a pyramidal space between the upper arm and the lateral chest wall. It serves as a passageway for nerves and vessels to the upper limb. Key structures include the axillary region, or armpit, is a pyramidal space between the upper arm and the lateral chest wall, serving as a passageway for nerves and vessels to the upper limb. Key structures include anterior wall, formed by the pectoralis major muscle, posterior wall, formed by the latissimus dorsi, teres major, and subscapularis muscles, medial wall, formed by the serratus anterior muscle along the rib cage, lateral wall, formed by the humerus. Base, formed by the skin, subcutaneous tissue, and axillary fascia. Apex, bound by the first rib, clavicle, and superior border of the scapula. Key features. Axillary artery and vein, major blood vessels supplying the upper limb. Brachial plexus, a network of nerves that innervate the upper limb. Axillary lymph nodes, important for lymphatic drainage from the upper limb and breast region. The axillary space is essential for the passage and protection of these vital structures, with each wall providing specific structural and functional support. Thank you for listening. If our podcast has been valuable to you, we would greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star rating and write a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, or subscribe, like, and share on our YouTube channel. Your support helps us greatly with discoverability. We hope to see you soon.